Hello, Floss Tube. It is Cheeky Mare Stitches, and I'm Libby. Cheeky Mare. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome back if you are returning, and welcome if you're new. As of this taping, I have 150 subscribers. Yay! Thank you so much, and every comment has been so nice, or a question um, that I, tr I tried to answer um, some of them on like the comments, but I thought I'd address a few, um, and that'll be later in the video with an actual demonstration, because I don't do well with words. <laughs> I do well with, sh I do better with showing, you know, so. I'm a draftsman, I like pictures, you know, I communicate with pictures, that's how I communicate. Anyway, um, so one of the questions that I'm going to address now is from Fiona, and she says, I'm thinking of starting a project on 40 or 46 count linen. I usually stitch on 32 count. Do you use one thread over two on higher counts? And do you prefer cotton or silk. So I did answer this on um, on YouTube with the comments, but I thought it would be an interesting way to open the video with answering a question. So um, it depends. <laughs> that's my that's my answer to everything. It depends, just really. Anyway, um, so if I like a silk enough, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to use it no matter what. <laughs> um, if I like a cotton enough, same thing. Um, so apparently silks are a little thicker, like silk thread is a little thicker than um, cotton thread, cotton floss. Thread. Um, so some people don't like using one strand of silk over two on like 40 count or 46 count and 50. I like it. I've got uh, two fifty, three fifty six counts <laughs> projects going. Um, one is using cotton, and two are using silk. And uh, the silk looks beautiful on it. It the the one is a little squishy um, because it's hand dyed. It's on a hand dyed linen, and so if you don't like squishy, then don't. I wouldn't use silk on fifty six count. Um, but 40 count, um, silk works great. It's great coverage. Um, but I don't mind sparse coverage either because I'm doing one over two on 28 count. So, you know, it's all about your preference, about lots of things. It's a person, there's no rules. It's what you like. It's like decorating, you know. I like natural wood and colors in my house. Some people like painted wood and um, gray um, walls or white walls. And that's fine. It's your decision. It's your preference. You do what you want to do. Um, there's no rules. The cross-stitching cops are not going to pull you over and say, you're doing that wrong. So just relax. If you like some fabric and you like some thread, try it. See if you like it. Um, if it's a little too squishy, you wasted 20 minutes doing a little test square or something. Anyway, so that is a little bit more in depth, but I am all for the higher counts if you can if you can see them. Um, because you get the same project, but you're using less material. You don't have to buy a yard of fabric for 28 count. You know, if on 56 count, it's half the size, basically, or a quarter the size. Um, and then you don't use as much floss. So that silk floss, that's super expensive. I mean, $8 a skein for some of my floss. Um, you don't need as much of it. So. I love the higher count, and I'm 33, and my eyes are still really good. These 
for distance. Um, so I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to milk that <laughs> while I can. So, um, but I do want to give you a little caveat that I do have some help with my 56 count. So I'm going to show you my setup to, to help. Um, in that and I'm a two-handed stitcher so I use a um, I use a lap stand and and I will link I don't remember the exact brand my dad got it for me for Christmas last year it's my favorite gift ever um and I'm going to do something super cool that my brother helped me with. And we're going to switch angles here. Oh, look at that. All right. So here's my lap stand. And it's adjustable for the length of the project. I usually just put a 11 by 11 Q-snap in it. So I don't usually use that feature. But it is a nice feature if you've got a longer um, like scroll rod frame. This will help you balance that a little bit more. And it's got some adjustable heads. Adjustable arm. And it, a tightener. It tightens. So it's wonderful. I love it. And I, I put it, I put a 11 by 11 Q-snap in it. It's just like that. And I usually stitch along the bottom. Now, what happens when I get up to the top? Well, I'm crazy and a little bit too logical sometimes. And I turn it over and I stitch this way, 180 degrees. You don't have to adjust your, I turn the chart over too. <laughs> So the chart is upside down, the stitching is upside down. But if you do 180, your stitching doesn't change. If you come, you know, if, you're, if your front leg, like mine does, goes this way, your first leg goes this way, it's good, that's going to be the same way 180 degrees from each other. Okay? So if you turn it, it's going to be the same way. All right, and then the top leg will be like that. So that's how I, this is 28 count, and it was used in a demonstration that you will see at the end. But um, that is how I stitch. Now, for the 50, this is 28 count, so it's easy to see for the 56 count fabric and for 40, um, I have this nifty light that attaches right here to my lap stand. And it's not plugged in or else I would show you, but it's got this clip and attaches right there. And then you can pretty much manipulate this to go anywhere. And it's got a magnifier on it. And I just bought this on Amazon, and I will try to link it in the description box below. It may take a couple of days because I'm bad at social media, but I will do my very best. That was a comment that I got that she wants to be enabled by having links in the description box. So I will try to oblige that. Anyway, so beautifully huge. So this is one of my... 56 count fabrics here. This is the hand dyed one, so it's probably more like 60 count. And you can't see it with this, this camera, but I can see them. I can see the holes just fine. Okay. So that's my setup, and it's wonderful, and I love it. And that allows me to choose and use less fabric with higher count. So anyway, enough of that. So I do have an FFO. Yay! 
Yay! That was so exciting. I had shown in my last video that I was going to um, finish my um, mini Quaker Autumn is Coming into a drum. And I have, look, the drum. I followed Vanna Pfeiffer's Pfeffers. I had I knew a Chris Pfeffer in elementary school, so I don't I don't know if it's Pfeiffer or Pfeffer, but um, I used her tutorial to make this into a drum, and with the exception of this little pucker right here, which I probably shouldn't have pointed out because no one else would have noticed, right? Um, I have made this beautiful pattern into a drum and I even fussy cut the top. Fussy cut for those of you who aren't quilters are you don't just cut a random piece of fabric like I did over here. See how this little star is not in the middle. I just cut a piece of random fabric. It fit whatever and then up here I didn't do that. I actually laid the circle on top of the fabric and I positioned it until I found where I wanted the the fabric. So that is that is fussy cutting because you're being a little fuss budget, which is fine. More power to the fuss budgets. I'm not that fussy usually, but it does look beautiful. I'm so excited. It's going to go on my desk at work. I haven't decided yet. This top part looks a little bare. I think I might put some like lace, cotton lace or something on the top or some little tiny fringe, purple fringe I found on Etsy. I don't know. Yet. Maybe I'll do an Instagram poll or something. But beautiful. I'm excited. So pretty. So pretty. Anyway, I will link the pattern and down below. I did not use the called for flosses, though. I used a bunch of weeks. I can, I'm really, really ambitious. You ask me very nicely. <laughs> I will um, write them all down. And I just picked what I thought looked good and where to put it. So that is my FFO. There is also an FO um, behind me. And one of the lovely ladies had asked about um, seeing some more of my quilt. And this is one of my quilts, and Daniel and I are going to do some B-roll that we'll insert here um, of the quilt and the pieces and the quilting. But I, it's a, um, it's Angela Walters' Build a Quilt, last year's Build a Quilt pattern. Um, they have it in three colorways. But this is uh, my second favorite colorway. And uh, I just got it done at my Long Armors, which is Lucky Star Quilt Co. in Carmel, Indiana. And Carmel, not Carmel. Um, and she did a beautiful job. Stephanie did a beautiful job, like she always does. When we were, when we were finishing up the quilt, we decided, we were talking about our other whips. And... Um, I had mentioned uh, Handwork Maniac, Brenda, and her daughter. Uh, her daughter is a um, Dave Ramsey follower, and she calls her mom's whips um, her cross-stitch debt or her whip debt. And so I mentioned that, and Stephanie and I are both Dave Ramsey followers. She's a Dave Ramsey success. <laughs> and... Um, Ramsey is a financial guru. If you do not know who that is, I definitely recommend him. And I will link to my debt-free screen down below. Yes. Um, I'm a dork right now. I'm sorry. 
um, we decided that we both had a lot of whip debt, like um, Handwork Maniac or Brenda. And so I decided when I was going to put this on my Instagram that I was going to do hashtag this quilt um, that's behind me. Um, I was going to do hashtag whip debt minus one or whip debt. So both of those hashtags. And I will link them down below, maybe. <laughs> but um, if you follow my Instagram, you'll see that beautiful quilt and that hashtag. And I would definitely join in the whip debt minus one. You're a coder minus minus one. And one minus minus. That's a little nerdy joke right there. Anyway. Um, so uh, now for the whips. Because we've been talking about whips. And that's a finish object. Finished object. So F-O. I just need to bind it. And I will send, show pictures of it bound. So now for my whips. Progress. I haven't done a whole lot of stitching this month because I've been quilting um, and I have a baby quilt due next week that I'm way behind on. So yeah, and I'm a procrastinator. Anyway, so the first whip I'm going to talk about is Lady and Unicorn, which is my oldest whip, my favorite whip, and also my biggest whip. But I love the BAPs. So, and for those of you who don't know what a BAP is, <laughs> that's big ass projects. Big ass. But here is the whip. And big ass is so true. My brother is going to edit in what it will look like when it's done, and possibly where it was when I started the month, but here is where it is now, and I'm going to do the nifty little switch, switch. All right, here's where it is now, and I worked mainly in her lovely face and hair. I finished that, and it looks just gorgeous. I even did to make her not so cross-eyed. <laughs> So, um, but this is actually 28 count with um, the, the kit fabric and kit floss. And it is one over two, which some people do not like the coverage of. And you know what? I like it. It's kind of lacy. Um, so again, there are no... There are no cross-stitching police. So if you like this look, do it and just be consistent with it. And if you're consistent, it'll be intentional. And if someone else doesn't like it, it's there. It's your do what makes you happy. And don't crab at people <laughs> if you don't like what they do. Anyway, that's just a little bit of commentary. You know, whatever. All right. The second whip that I did was, is from Courtney Collection. That's the back. It is on 56 count, beautiful honey, gold, golden honey, I believe, by Barbara Creations. She is in Hungary. And Daniel is going to put over here um, what the pattern will look like when it's complete and where it was when I started the month. And here's where it is. She's a beauty. She's a little naked. Censorship. <laughs> but she's, I think she's going to be just gorgeous. And I did, and this is with a silk, silk and colors, silk one over two, if I didn't say that already. 
And I filled in this area around the flower. I did the second chesticle area and a little bit around her face. And I'm the border goes all the way around and I'm doing that a little bit of a time because I don't like repetitive, repetitive stitching. Just a bunch of X's. <laughs> but, um, so I'm trying to do that as efficiently as possible and so I don't get bored. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful fabric. Be and I love Barbara All Creations fabric. I have several and I'm planning to get several more. Um, so Courtney Collections, Mermaid's Folly. This, because this is hand dyed, it shrinks a little bit in the dyeing process. So the one over, um, two is a little squishy and it's, um, cause I'm using a silk. So if you don't like squishy, I wouldn't recommend using a silk and I can maybe get closer. Yeah. It's a little squishy, but I love it. It's pretty. I like it, I'm gonna do it. This is not a hand dyed fabric and I'm using silk on this. I'm using another Silks For You, Castles and Elephants, I think it is. And then a Exju Designs um, a silk, variegated silk. That is just gorgeous, I bought a whole bunch of it. Um, and this is Ink Circles Growth Rings. And up here, um, Daniel is going to put um, what the pattern should look like when I'm done, minus the color changes, and where it was before, possibly, if I have it. But here it is now. And I did, I worked up here. Okay, so I had I made a boo boo, and I made one of these a little too long, one of those stitch one stitch too long, and so I had to frog when I got up here. And frogging on fifty six count is a pain in the butt, and I was getting impatient, and I accidentally snipped one of the linen threads. It's over. My time is wasted. Hold on, hold on, calm down. It's okay. You're a quilter. It'll be all right. What do I have that can help me? I have some clear usable interfacing. Excellent, excellent. So I put a little bit of clear fusible interfacing on the back. So it made punching through, you can see it right, um, right there, working in backwards, it's hard. Um, you can see it right there. And so it made punching through a little bit difficult, but it didn't make it completely ruined for having one stitch. Shrewd, shrewd excuse me. <laughs> and um, so that's what I did. If you cut something accidentally, it's okay, calm down. If it's gonna be stitched over anyway, buy some fusical, fusible interfacing, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. No one will notice, you can't even tell. Can you tell where the hole is? In that little light purple flower? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So, anyway. And this is about a fourth of the way done. So oh, maybe a finish this year? Doubt it. I got so many Christmas presents to do. All right, the next whip is a restart because I wasn't enjoying it, and it is Templar of Prophecy by Long Dog. It's going to put over here what it'll look like when it's done. And here is my original. It is on a 28 count Joblin minus this. This was for a demonstration that you'll see at the end of this video. Um, this is on a 28 count Joblin that's kind of green. Doesn't really look green in this light, but it's, it's like a, 
it's a light baby poop green. Anyway. And I wasn't in, and it's uh, a silks for you um, silk that I'm doing two over two in this pattern. And it's beautiful. It's just not really me. It's very bright. And I like the bright purple, obviously. I'm wearing bright purple. But the bright green slash teal and the bright blue on this fabric weren't really working for me. And the 28 count is going to make it huge and it's going to go in my kitchen and I don't have a whole lot of wall space. So I decided to restart it on 40 count. I started it in a different place so that I didn't get bored. But this is on 40 count 18th century raven. And I got it from 123 stitch. And I'm cheap and I use I use quilting fabric to get my three inches of extra and it frames just fine. So um, don't don't worry about the scary bit of margin that I've got there. But anyway, so here is where it is now. And I started in the lower middle, the lowest middle, the bottom middle, that's the word. And I am loving the Silk For You so much better on this kind of charcoal gray. It's looking a little brown in this light, but it's actually a charcoal gray. And it is gorgeous. And I didn't really like the striping effect that this one was having. See how it's stripey? And this was when I was new with variegated, and so... I didn't know exactly what I was doing, so I was experimenting, and I, I didn't really like the experiment. So, I didn't want this tree, because this is a tree. It doesn't really look like a tree, but it is. Um, I didn't want this tree to be super snipey, uh, stripey in the trunk, so what I did was I did a little serpentine up the chart with, like, a darker blue portion of the fabric, and then I went, I did, you know, whatever else, finishing that thread. And then I did the purple with a purple part and the teal with a, a tealy part. And I think it kind of looks like bark. So I don't know. What do you think? It kind of looks like a cyclops, a really skinny cyclops right now. But when I put the rest of the leaves on, it'll look fine. But I think it's way better, and I'm going to love it. Anyway, so that still counts as a whip, It is, but it is a restart. Now, because of this finish, you get to start another one, right? You get, to, you get to start a new one. Well, I went from this long skinny piece to this long skinny piece. <laughs> I told you that I liked BAPS. Well, I am doing the Prairie Schooler alphabet. I'm doing it on a big, long piece. This is called German Banding. I also got this from 123 Stitch. It is 27 count pyramid natural. It's four and a half inches, or 4.7 inches. And it's two yards of it. <laughs> I'm doing all 26 plus and 27 letters, seven motifs, whatever, means on this. And I started in the middle with N. Where I am. Oh, look, I have this nifty little setup that my brother helped me with. Oh, I'm a dork. Okay. So this is where I am so far. I've done one color. <laughs> It is one over one. Working backwards is lovely. And this banding means that all I'm gonna have to do want to be done is do a little bit of fusible interfacing on the back and put little loops on the end here and hang it between, you know, two bars. 
and it's going to go above one of my big picture windows between the ceiling and the window. So this is where I am now. <laughs> it's going to take me years to finish this, but it's going to be so pretty. And I will put a picture of completed pattern up in the corner or my brother will because he's doing my editing because he's wonderful no one could ask for a better brother all right um, and then you know because I started this whip and I have a huge project baby quilt due next week um, what should I do I should concentrate on the baby quilt, right? No. I am, I got a um, package from Barbaral Creation with some 56 count pearl gray fabric that's just gorgeous. And so I decided I'm going to start something else, right? Another big ass project. Here it is. It is. Anne Grimshaw, 1818, by the Scarlet Letter. And here's what it'll look like without a glare when it's done. I love Quakers. Used to be a Quaker religiously, and now I'm just in love with Quakers, the pattern. But here is where I am with this whip. 56 count pearl gray. It's a little bit bluer on the colder um, purple scale than it's showing here. And I'm using um, Color and Cotton Dark Truffle, which is this beautiful like reddish purple brown. And I bragged the other day, or just a second ago, with my restart of the long dog, that I'm stingy with my fabric and that I use um, quilting fabric for my margin. That bit me in the butt because I went all the way across and I was 20 stitches short. All of this, 20 across, or all the way across, and I was 20 stitches short. So I get to frog all this on 56 count. I know. But I started over here, and I'll just go this way. <laughs> so I'm frogging a little, stitching a little, frogging a little, stitching a little. But my stingy, cheap, I'm going to outsmart this mentality, <laughs> bit me in the BAP project. <laughs> oh. But it's gorgeous, and I'm going to love it when it's done. And it helped me, helped me procrastinate baby quilt that's due. Oh, anyway, so that is that those are my whips. That's my progress this week. Progress. Uh, Hi, everyone. I'm Cheeky Mare's brother, Dan, and she forgot to introduce one of the clips that we also shot the same day. And so that clip will be following. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video and then she will close out after that. Thank you. Now that you've seen my setup and know that I work with a lap stand and a Q-snap, you can see a couple of things I do that will address some of the questions that were asked. So um, Jackie had asked how I deal with orphan stitches or stitches that are um, far away from other stitches and like maybe there's just one or two so there's not really a whole lot of um 
stability in those stitches. And so I, I have decided that it depends on what I'm stitching on. So most of the time I, I prefer darker fabric. So I, when I'm doing darker fabric, I just carry um, because chances are it's not going to be seen. But on lighter fabric like this, um, I will do something called a waist knot. And so what it is, is you tie a knot in your thread. Oops. Sorry, working with the camera that I don't really know. Um, tie a knot in your thread. And then let's say that the stitch is right here. Okay. You go farther away from the stitch and you go down into the fabric with your needle and let the knot catch, okay? So then you actually stitch, okay? And make sure it's a good distance away. And we'll discuss why here in a second. But um, you, you do the stitch here. With kind of an awkward angle, so forgive my awkward stitching and slow stitching. Anyway, the stitch. Okay, so now you have these two threads, and I'm going to show you here in a second. You've got the waist knot that you can still see and the the thread connected to your needle and so let's pretend that i have flipped over my um, canvas or my linen and this is the back of my fabric okay so i have pulled out or i have snipped the waist knot so we're going we're back down here if you if you snip just above this waist knot now you can you have this these two threads here right so now I have these two threads. I've got a longer waist knot and I have the thread that is the working thread, okay? So you just tie them together. Don't do it too tight because you don't want to pull the stitches, but just tie them together, a double, double knot here. And then you can just clip pretty short. And then if you're still not quite secure in that, if when these are snipped short, I use just a little bit of fusible interfacing and just put it right over the top here. And um, I use the thinner uh, fusible interfacing so it doesn't, it's not noticeably seen on the back. Um, and I can tell you what brand or something later. And that will secure this little orphaned, orphan stitch or lost stitch or whatever. Um, but if it's on, again, if it's on darker fabric, I just carry and waste some thread and hope that it doesn't show. <laughs> and if it does show, I'm not a perfectionist. Okay. So Hannah and Angela had asked about my trolley needle and for laying, for a laying tool. And this is what it looks like. Okay, it's just a little ring with a large blunt needle on it. And I have chosen to wear it on my ring finger because um, I manipulate the needle, the, the working needle, with these three fingers. With these three fingers. So thumb, pointer, middle. And so it's just easier. It doesn't get in the way if it's on the ring finger. So what a trolley needle is used for is for getting these two threads to lay nicely. And some people will use a something called a railroading technique, which is where they take the working needle 
and they go between the two legs, the, th the two threads here. And go through and it makes it lay pretty nice. The only problem with that is it takes forever and cross stitching already takes forever. So I don't want to have to deal with that. So this laying tool, this trolley needle, what you do is first leg like you normally would but as you're pulling it through you stick the trolley needle in and as you pull it tight you take the trolley needle out okay so here's the top leg see I'm doing this awkwardly I'm sorry so that the camera can see it so you stick in the loop you pull gently and once it gets flat enough, you take the trolley needle out. Okay, so show it again. Okay. All right, so that's how you use a trolley needle. And the way I use it is I'm manipulating the top, the top needle or the needle, the working needle with these three fingers, right? So I'm pinching the needle into these three fingers and like turning it and manipulating it. So the way that you get the trolley needle in line is you just flip your hand over and close your fingers. Okay, so let's, let's show that again with actual thread here. So. so I've I've manipulated the, the working thread and now I'm getting ready to use the trolley needle. I will flip my hand and close my fingers. There is the trolley needle ready to use. Okay. Once you get comfortable, and if you were in a comfortable position like I am not, it gets really quick to lay these down. Okay. That's how you use a trolley needle. Hopefully that was clear. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, give me a comment. Um, I, tend, I try to answer or at least uh, like all of your comments. Um, if I don't answer you right away, it's probably because I'm going to cover it in the next video. So don't get offended. I'm also, I've said this before, but I'm, I'm also bad at social media. So if I don't get to you, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm a bad millennial and I don't know well. So hold tight. Work with me. We'll get through this. <laughs> um, okay. So like, subscribe. Um, I'm thinking when I get to 250 subscribers I'll do a little giveaway not sure exactly what I'll give away yet but I'll let you know and thanks so much to my brother for helping me with this amazing setup there is a camera suspended over my head hanging from a, a rope and bunches of lights and buttons and this cool little push buttony thing so that I can switch between things. Done a wonderful job. Anyway. Anyway. That's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you're having a nice time, even though we're in this world that 
has a virus and we need to unload and reload it. Uninstall and reinstall. Um, but make the best of it. Enjoy your stitching. Be nice to people. Have a good day.